Um, and I have to say, last week my fitness felt terrible. My gut was huge. Hey race fan, Brian Davis, Brian Davis Races. Today I'm gonna to touch base on something I heard about in my other life called the EPOC. And what that stands for is Excess Post Exercise EPOC Post Oxygen Consumption. EPOC, Excess Post Oxygen Consumption. So what that means is there was some studies done and the results are mm, as anything scientific or exercise related, kind of all over the place. But essentially what they're trying to say is that if you throw your body into uh, hard effort, recovery, hard effort, recovery, hard effort, recovery, your body copes with that by springing different mechanisms to life. So the concept is that you burn more calories when you're done working out than would normally be justified for the amount of time that you spend working out. So the theory thereafter is if you work out for an hour of just st steady state versus 45 minutes of intervals, which one's gonna get you further ahead? So th I'm not here to debate the science, but it, it got me thinking uh, about assumptions that I make. And one of the assumptions that I make is in training, I assume that I need 15 or 20 minutes to warm up and my body to feel right. When I'm racing, I definitely believe that, but if I'm out for a training ride, I feel like I don't need that much time and I end up burning a lot of time away from the family that's costing me precious training time. So in any event, the theory I've been playing with lately is, well, let's get on the road, warm up five minutes to give yourself a fighting chance, and then blast straight away to an interval. Now, I know you've experienced this, so you're late for a ride and you're sprinting out of the house and you're trying to get there as quickly as possible. And for the first couple minutes, you're like, oh my God, I feel like a million bucks. This is gonna be the best day ever. <gasps> and then it catches up with you and you just about die. So my theory is if I try that process, maybe once or twice per workout, I can get a lot of uh, pain crammed into like a 45 minute workout and then I spend the last 20 minutes going just below uh, threshold to just make sure that I'm doing the things I know are necessary to do as a cyclist. So the constraints here, I have about 45 minutes to go for a ride. I'm going to go out for about five minutes. I'm going to blast out a big hard interval for like three minutes. Uh, I might recoup for a minute and then try to do another three minute. And then I'll probably take a longer break and then do another couple shorter intervals. And then after that, I'm going to shoot for 20 minutes to get back home at a pretty level, not insane pace. Uh, and that's going to take me about 45 minutes. So all right, I'm going to hit the road and we're going to see what happens. I'm going to take you with me. All right, let's go for a quick spin. So this is not my first one of these. I've done three of these this week. Well, close to it at least. Um...
Okay. Oh, all done. That was just over an hour, but would have been under an hour, but I saw a group ride leaving my shop. So I stopped to visit with some people and then I got going again. So here's what I did. Three minutes, three minutes, three minutes, five minutes in between three sessions of that. And then took a pretty good sized break, said hi to my friends and then got rolling again, did another three minute hard effort, took another break and then blasted home for the last, whatever, seven or eight minutes. So, all right. So does it work for cycling? You know, that was just one workout. Of course, I wasn't trying to show you whether it worked or not, but my experience this week in the mornings have been really good. If you're crunched for time to get a structured hour in, I think every time beats an hour of noodling. Um, and I think I fired up my metabolism, so that'll help with whatever I eat tonight. And I had a few other things I was going to say. I might think of it later when, uh, when we're done with that. And that stupid train stops blowing its stupid horn. Next year, our town goes train silent, and I cannot wait. There's few things in life that f frustrate me more than a train. Real talk. Can't stand the whistles. Like, if the intersection is 30 yards apart, do you think someone crossing is only going to hear it when they're 30 yards at the other intersection? No. It's not going to make a difference. So you don't have to blow it every five seconds. <sighs> All right. If you like what I had to say today, subscribe, share, tell your friends. If you don't like what I had to say today, go blow the horn whistle.